guys, welcome to another IndieSoft Tip Tuesday. I'm back. This is Chuck. And I'm Evan. And today we're going to be talking about a little something called the Fluke Results Importer.exe. Oh boy. We've been Are we going to be able to cover that all in one video, you think? You know what? I don't think we can. You don't think, you, no. you don't think so? We're going to have to do two videos? Two videos. Two videos. You heard it here. Two videos, everybody. So. Yes. Our first Tip Tuesday mini-series. Uh, so you'll have to stay tuned for next week to see the second half of this. Um, but we will break it up into two very different um, uses for this. The first week, this week being that we're going to set it up, make sure that your SQL server is all configured properly, and just making sure that you get a connection and edit the fields. And then next week, we're going to actually have the real-life applications of it within IndieSoft and how you can use it for your events and how you can grab data from Metcal. Pull in some results, maybe do some other mappings of some fields we want to grab that aren't just kind of out-of-the-box stuff. So Yeah, exactly. So today is a little more configuration heavy, so this will make the admins out there happy. Cool. So to get started, uh, first we can just talk about where you can find your fluke results importer.exe. It is going to be in your install directory for me. It's just going to be on my C drive and program files. I'm a nice default installer type of person. I don't like to make custom folders. Unlike me. I like to have many many different folders. Yep. All right, so as soon as we launch in, so let's sign in. It's going to tell us that we haven't configured it yet. Now, if you want to configure it, of course you would say yes. Is that what we do? Yes. All right. And then now we have our main screen here. So this is essentially how we're going to be setting up our database settings. So IndieSoft Fluke Results Importer needs to point both to the destination, which will be the IndieSoft, and that is handled through your regular database settings, so you don't have to worry about that. But the other one, where it's getting the information from, is going to be an SQL server, and that's going to be coming straight from MedCal. So by default, I believe we usually name it MedTeam or I have MedTeam2, but really it's up to the database administrator what they want to name this when they set it up. So if you're not sure, just double check with them. So what we need to get from this is the SQL server name, the database name, a username and password, and uh, you just need to make sure that you have something created that actually has a password. If you try to set it up with SA and just leave the password blank, for example, um, it's going to yell at you. So what we did was we went ahead and added a user in the met here. And we did that with login, new login. And then we set our password to something really basic. It's just a password so we can remember it. And that's how we're going to use for the username. So in the met. Go ahead and fill zero in here for the SQL server. And then we need to grab the server name, which is just going to be up here. For us, it's quite long, so. Oh, just SQL Express. OK. And then the database name we've already talked about, MetTeam2. And that's all we really need to make a connection. Uh, you can also set up a runtime DXC location, so you can go ahead and automatically launch your MetCal um, from IndieSoft. But we don't need to do that. And for the purpose of this video, we'll just leave it blank. So let's go ahead and test that connection. Beautiful. And let's go ahead and save that. Now, the next part is going to be setting up your mapping here. So by default, we kind of have these fields coming in. But for example, let's say you want this remark to be pulled in. Uh, this is something that I've added myself, so I'll go ahead and delete that and kind of walk through how you can set that up. So once you have a database connection and you're good there, when you go to add one, you can click this add button here, change your fluke version to nine, because that's what we are working in right now. And then result type, uh, I usually just leave it any valid row. Fluke field, this is what you'll be pulling from. So let's say we know that our remarks are what we want. So let's check out this view here. So just checking in here, 
on our table itself. We can kind of browse the data and pick what we want. I see I have a lot of information here in the remarks that I'll probably want to show on my certs. And right now, I don't have remarks being pulled in ever since I deleted that row. So what we can do here is add in the remarks. So let's go ahead and grab that. And since it's kind of a description field, let's go ahead and do a line description. And save that rule, and it'll add it as a new row. That's pretty nifty. Yeah. In a line. And then we can save and exit. And now your Fluke Metcal is set up. You can configure it however you want. You can delete any of those rows that you saw before. You can add any rows you want. Like what's this? Unfinished backup. Oh, that's because I didn't close it properly. Let's go ahead and back all the way out. And when you already are connected and you want to get back to your settings here, you'll see the, the cog is actually grayed out. To kind of reset this form, you click this, and then you can go back in here and see your settings. It's a little bit tricky, but you'll get the hang of it. So yeah, you can add any fields here. You can change the order however you want. You can trim left and right. What that means is it'll clear out any spaces, tabs, or character returns on either the left or right hand side of your strings. So if you're pulling in a data field and it says space one, um, space being space bar, not the actual word space, um, and you trim it left, it'll get rid of that space. So it will just be a one being pulled in. So it's a good way to kind of clean up your data as you're pulling it in. And then, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to uh, setting up your mapping options. Very fun. Yeah, super interesting stuff here. So I also want to talk about something that you might run into. And you'll notice that we're running uh, SQL Express. The reason I'm doing that is because uh, there's an extra step here you want to make sure that you have enabled. Uh, if you go to the SQL Server Configuration Manager, um, you're going to want to go down here to your network configuration for SQL Express, and then go ahead and enable TCP IP. Doing this will um, cut down on problems you can have when actually using it in the client. I know there are a couple of errors that some of um, our client's text we're running into, and uh, it was because, for some reason, uh, whenever you have SQL Express, TCP IP is by default disabled, but on the full SQL Server version, um, it's actually enabled by default, so it took us a while to figure that one out. But just double check on that if you have SQL Express. Anything cool. else you have to add? I'd love to see actually pulling in the results, so... Pulling in the results? But uh, I think we might have to leave that for next week. Yeah. Cliffhanger. Exactly. So, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, watching this, and stay tuned for uh, next week when we show you how to pull in some of the results and get that into your test points grid, and you can complete uh, an event with it. Awesome. Cool. Happy we'll see calibrating. You.